the agenda for this video we're going to look at the one sample t-test we're going to set up the hypothesis test setting we're going to look at the distribution of the test statistic under the null and alternative hypothesis and then we're going to illustrate it using the R statistical software package here to set up our test our data must follow a normal distribution with some mean and some mu our hypothesis in this case it's going to be a one-sided t-test and the null says that our mean is equal to some value called mu naught and the alternative is that the mu the mu the mean is actually bigger than mu naught uh, n is the sample size so, um, sample mean sample variance and our significance levels alpha so our test statistic and this is taught in the elementary statistics class is this is the difference or it's our sample mean minus our hypothesized value divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of n and it generates a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom we find this tell area where it equals alpha and then we calculate the test statistic and we see where it falls in here if it's greater than this value, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's less than this, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Now, uh, one note is under the null, meaning the true mean is mu naught, our test statistic is what's called a central T distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And that's what this curve represents. It's a T distribution, and we find where the test statistic falls. But when we calculate power or sample size, we have to assume that the alternative is true. And assuming that the alternative is true means we have to pick some value greater than mu naught, say mu one. So mu one is in the alternative region greater than mu naught. And then the test statistic can be shown to follow a non-central t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom and non-centrality parameter We'll just call it NCP, where the non-centrality parameter is equal to this value. Now, the most intriguing part about this is this non-centrality parameter determines the shape of the non-central T distribution. The larger this value is, the more it's shifted to the right. And if it's negative, the more negative it is, it's shifted to the left. And then how to make this larger? you increase in and that we know increases power but what it's doing from a distributional standpoint is is shifting that t distribution the non-central t distribution to the right increasing power another way to increase this value is make this difference bigger so it means pick a value farther into the alternative region or a you know, or a bigger effect size sometimes it's called that. So, anyway, so let's get on the computer and uh, show this graphically. Okay, this is R. I'm using RK Ward as the GUI for R itself, and we're going to look at the one sample t test. It's going to be a one sided uh, test at a significance level alpha. <laughs> Let's pick some values here to illustrate. We're going to have a 5% alpha level, have a sample size of 30. We're going to pick a mu naught of 3. So we're going to test, is the mean 3 or is it greater than 3? We're going to assume the population standard deviation is 4. Now I want to create some data that goes for, you know, for the x-axis and then transform it to a t and then plot it so we can look at this. So this is the t distribution. It actually goes to negative infinity to positive infinity. I cut it off from negative 4 to 8. Uh, this is it. And so we need to find a critical value here that makes this region 0.05 or alpha. And we will plot that. So here we go. So now if we were to conduct this test, we'd calculate the test statistic and we see where it falls. If it's greater than this value, then we'd reject the null hypothesis. If it's less than this value, we would not reject it. 
But to calculate power, we have to assume the alternative is true. The probability that we reject the null hypothesis given that the alternative is true. So we have to assume a value in the alternative region and then plot the distribution of the test statistic, which is a non-central t distribution, and then calculate the area under the curve. So let's do that. Let's just pick a value of 4, which is greater than 3. And I want to plot some va plot this distribution to show you. When we assume that 4 is true and not 3, the distribution shifts. So to calculate the probability that we reject, or meaning in this region, it means that we're under this curve here. Now let me illustrate that graphically. So this green area is now the probability that we reject the null hypothesis given that the true value of mu is 4. Now this is not a lot of area so we you know usually want 80 percent so you want 80 percent of this curve over or shifted to the right so the probability is at least 80 percent that you reject given them all you know the alternative is true but let's calculate what power we have here so the test statistic or the function in R to do that is called power.t.test and here n was defined to be 30 and we have 4 minus 3 uh, sigma was 4 alpha a was 0.05 and we're leaving power empty because that's what we want to calculate and it's a one sample one sided test so to calculate power it is 37.9 percent power which is not a lot now to do this from first principles is one function so p t is the distribution function and we're going to calculate it from the critical value in minus one degrees of freedom with this non-centrality parameter and we want the right tail and so when we look at that the area under that curve is exactly the same as the power so it is indeed the same but we want to know what sample size we need to achieve an 80 percent power so we'll use the same power dot t dot test and we'll leave the n blank or null we'll put the same delta in 4 minus 3 uh, sigma 4 alpha 0.05 and we want a power of 80 percent or 0.8 so this will tell us the sample size needed and to achieve that power and we need a sample size of 101 you round up so now I want to illustrate what is going on. Okay. I want to I want to put a, a thick dark line because I'm going to recreate these distributions increasing sample size incrementally so we can see the shift as it goes to the right. So I'm going to first calculate it, the power when n is 70 and look at it it is shifted to the right but the majority of it is not shifted enough to what, what makes the area 80 percent we need 101 for it to be 80 percent so the next one let's look at uh, 81 percent or 101 and that's this distribution right here so 80 percent of this curve or 80 percent of the area is shifted to the right and so that is is power and that's what's happened graphically and so we could recalculate that from first principles which I didn't do but we could easily do it so that's an illustration of power and sample size calculations hope you enjoyed the presentation thank you